snowy today here in Wisconsin it's Saturday really don't feel like doing any shoveling or snow blowing today because it's gonna snow till tomorrow so I think it's gonna be a perfect time to stay in the house and do some painting here's a quick little note on my work area on my palette and on my paint thinner system I like to use with my brushes, just real quick. Uh, I like to use a glass palette. Uh, a glass palette is nice because uh, what I do is I, I, I tape a piece of white paper underneath the glass. You can use a gray paper if you like, uh, or any color you like, but I guess some people might like to use black, but white on the background so I can see my colors really nice underneath the glass, I tape it around. And the nice thing about a glass palette uh, besides that is it's easy to clean uh, just take a little uh, paper towel and, and wet the area a little bit first that you're going to clean you know wet it like that and then take a scraper and scrape it off got a little scraper blade here and that's why I like to use a glass palette because it's easy to clean. The other uh, thing I wanted to show you is my uh, two two jars here I have uh, with uh, paint thinner, uh, well mineral spirits. Uh, one I keep as my dirtier uh, my dirtier jar and one is a, a clean jar. So when I clean my brushes I usually dip them first in the my dirtier tank, dip them first in that and then wipe them with the piece of cloth and then I then I dip them in the clean the cleaner jar and wipe them with a the piece of cloth I like these this system um, it's got a I'm not sure who makes it silicon it's got a little coil you see that little oh, <laughs> little coil bottom on there where you can rub your brushes on and and the uh, material will will sink beneath there uh, and lay on the bottom of the jar where you can clean it out later. And I don't clean them out very often because the paint just sinks down the bottom and it works out really nicely. Uh, about my uh, thinner, now I don't usually use this like a, uh, uh, this is from the, any kind of uh, Home Depot or anything, this odorless mineral spirits. I don't like to use that because I don't know why they call it odorless when you get it from like a paint store or something. It's not odorless, it stinks. If you want to get something that really doesn't stink to clean your brushes and to thin your colors, get I get Gamsol uh, from, uh, Gam from Gamblin. They're Gamsol Mineral Spirits. It really is not, it has no odor at all. It's great if you're going to be painting and uh, inside obviously or better yet I used to paint in my apartment and it's great for painting inside there's no stink this is part two of our my uh, little video demonstration on glazing in oil painting and we're gonna work on this painting uh, which is called the whisper and you can refer to the previous video for some more information on this painting. We're going to work again on uh, the guy in the wheelchairs. We're going to work on his blanket area. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. We did a little glazing in my last video on this blanket area here. And this, uh, this is dried for about a week. Uh, and uh, we're going to put some more, uh, another uh, layer of glaze on top of the work that we did last week. Let's talk a little bit about the colors we're using today. And, uh, okay, 
I have mixed, we're gonna work on this area here. I've mixed uh, basically a few values here of red, uh, reds and red violet. I first started off uh, for the darker areas in the uh, blanket here, the purple, uh, dark purple areas. I started with a base of um, some ultramarine violet with alizarin crimson and a little of my black color that I used to blacken, which you can see information on the previous video. I also have my uh, gray uh, color, which I used to gray down my grays, uh, to, to use to gray down uh, my colors. And that's my kind of base, base dark purple area for the darker areas. Uh, for the lighter area in here in this little lighter squares, again, I'm gonna put another coat of uh, the lighter area here. I used uh, this base, dark purple. I mixed a little bit of white with it. It was just a small amount of zinc white. Uh, I added some um, cadmium yellow, I mean cadmium red medium to this color to make it a little more red, kind of a pinkish, pinkish purple, but very uh, kind of lighter than the rest, but still a little dark. And then I noticed there's some little areas, um, you might see some little areas here, the teeny little squares that I'm seeing a little bit of orange in there, um, a little subtle. So I made um, an orange variety of these colors, mixing uh, uh, my lighter reddish color here. I added a little yellow to it and a little bit of a little cadmium yellow medium with a little bit of cadmium medium red and made a orangish color. Did I say that right? Cadmium yellow medium with cadmium yellow, cadmium red medium uh, mixed with these colors to make an orange a value for some of these little smaller orange-ish little areas that I see. Uh, I mixed uh, my glaze with my Galkid medium. I would pour about, let me just uh, give you a sample. I would pour about that much medium and mix with, uh, and mix with um, you know, maybe say, that amount of pigment and blend it in really well and so that it's mostly glaze okay in my last video i mentioned i was going to explain a little bit on the difference between glazing and ala prima so let me quickly kind of go over that with glazes uh you know we're using a, a, a small amount of pigment Say for instance, you know, once again, a little small amount of pigment and a large amount of medium. And mixing that together and we're painting it in really, you know, over dry paint, over a dry background, we're painting a really thin, as you can see, really thin glaze of paint. Ala prima, on the other hand, is when you're, say for instance, I want to paint with an orange color, a little yellow, a little red, and you and that make you know that makes orange. Okay, so we're gonna take that. No, uh, no medium involved here. Oh, you could use a little bit to thin it out, but you don't have to when you're painting ala prima. And I uh, take a brush and I dip it into my mix and I paint on the canvas. That's ala prima. Mixing it on your palette and you can mix it right on the canvas if you want. If you want. But that's, that's the difference. Ala prima, ala prima is mixing your color and going directly and painting in. That's the main difference. Glazes 
multiple thin layers of multiple thin layers of paint over your canvas. Alla prima, thicker, uh, mixing it right on the can, mixing it right on the palette or right on the canvas and and painting. We're going to start again with our our uh, lighter uh, red color in some of these lighter squares. Uh, this red mixture of um, alizarin crimson, cadmium red medium, and a little bit of zinc white in this area of the little lighter squares. Once again, we're going to put another layer of this lighter red in these squares. Very thin layer. Once again, I'm using my reference, uh, photo reference, to, to see the colors. And again, we're going to put, paint some of these lighter squares. Want. I'm going to paint some more of these other areas over here, some of these other squares that have this lighter color. Once again, this, this color does have a little bit of white in it, very uh, just a small amount. I've painted some more of these this lighter red and some of these lighter squares with a color that uh, had a little bit of um, zinc white in it. I, I think I see a little bit of
about the underpaintings, painting this way, is we don't have to worry about all the shadow and the light and the value. We're letting that, we've already done that work with the underpainting, and we're letting that come through. Now, some of their detail areas will have to darken as we go along, but right now, we don't have to worry about the shading and the value underneath. We've already done that with the underpainting. Okay, that's a good start. Just a little bit of that color has got along with the alizarin crimson and the cadmium yellow. I'm cadmium, sorry, cadmium red. Okay. Okay, here we are. Uh, we have our darker glaze color which is alizarin crimson with a little bit of my black. And some of this we can blend into the, the area we just created with the lighter red. Some of that we can darken with this. Okay, I'll continue to darken these areas with this color. Okay, Once again, I'm still uh, using some of my darker mixture. We can go into some of these darker lines that we see here. I have a deep, more detailed brush here. We can go into some of these darker lines, this color. It's part of the underpainting but th those can still get a little darker as we go. So I can go in and some of these darker stripes that we see. I can add this. Add this darker color to some of these stripes. So they're not just black or the underpainting. I want to add some color to them. So we can start doing that with this um, this darker this darker value that we have here. We 
detail here is already done for us. So we just, with the underpainting, so we're just going over it. Darken some of those stripes. And uh, as I mentioned in a video before, the glazes here we're glazing on, they're going to, they're going to lighten in value, a tendency to lighten in value when this painting dry, when this painting dries. The glaze tends to look a little lighter the next day. That's the thing with glazes. Instead of just painting it black, ala prima, we would just mix our color uh, black and red and just uh, mix it right, right on the palette and just paint it in. But we're building up, building up these colors here, um, you know, day by day, letting it, the colors underneath come through. And that really helps give an intensity to the colors that we don't that we get that we don't get just from painting Ala Prima. Okay, I mentioned that we had some little areas I see a little a little more. Can you see this? Some little areas here that had a little touch of orange, a little lighter color, which you know I mixed a a little bit of uh, with my cadmium red and my alizarin crimson mixed with the little black that I had. I added a little bit of yellow to that mixture to make it a little more orange. And we're just gonna touch in a little couple of these squares here and there with a little bit of this. orangish color. can do that later with the future glazes, as I mentioned. There's a little bit of orange value in his tentacles. So I'm going to glaze some of this orange that we have. Go ahead and glaze.
Again, that's going to dry a lot lighter. We're going to keep on adding. I see some more dark areas of red and purple in these tentacles. We'll add those later. Okay, I want to work a little bit now in this area of our, let's see, our guy in a wheelchair's head. We see these gray values and some of the white. I think we're going to use a little glaze with some white as well uh, for both this darker area, the, gla the gray, and for uh, some more white glaze for the lighter area here. So I've taken I've taken my black, which I told you how to make in the in my black. I used to shade black uh, the colors. I'm gonna use some of that, and I mixed it with some uh, zinc white here. And uh, this black that I mix, as we can see here. I added a little bit of zinc white, let me see here, and that looks pretty, pretty good, I believe, to this gray that's in the photograph in the dark area of his uh, mask, uh, the middle, middle gray area. I think this color, uh, which is just my black mixture with a little zinc white, works uh, quite well. So we're gonna give it a try. Um, so I mixed it, this is at first here, basically Alla Prima, but we're gonna mix this with some glaze medium. Mix that up. And I think that will make a nice glaze layer for this gray color. See that? I think that's a good start. Let's add some of that color I just mixed as a glaze. And kind of Brush it on these areas first. Start in the darker areas. The underpainting is going to come through. Now, since this has some white in it, I'm not going to go into these darker areas here. No need for that, really. We're, we don't need to lighten the dark, real dark areas up. You just want to put it in the mi middle gray areas here to color and add some depth and that's probably about it I can see that some of this area there's gonna be a little more blue tint I think to it so we'll save that for a glaze another day this is this is more of a just a gray color Um, 
like I said, it's tinted with white, so it's better for the middle ground and light areas. Not so much for the darker areas, so, so we're, we're going to stay out of the, the darker areas. And just a thin layer. And it, it, it will light. It will be even lighter when this dries, as I mentioned before. Glaze glazes tend to lighten up as they dry. So once again, just to get a hint of this, it's almost a, a warmer gray that I've mixed here. A gray color, and let's blend that up. Now I'm going to add. I'm going to add. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to this, gla to this glaze. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to add a little white to it and use that to go ahead and highlight some of this, these areas. So let me do that. Let me mix some white with some of this glaze that I had here. And lighten some of it up. I've taken some zinc white and added it to that last that middle ground gray color that I created I've added some zinc white to it um, to lighten it and then I added some more medium to that mixture on my my palette um, to because um, we don't want to just paint white over this ala prima we want it, once again, to be a light glaze. So I added some more medium to that mixture after I added the white to it because we, we don't want to paint white. White is, still, white is still more opaque than other colors. So we wanted I wanted to thin it out with some medium. So that's what I did. Mixed some more of the white to my gray and then added some more medium to that. So it's a thin, thin glaze. A lighter white. We're going to use that just in these lighter areas. These lighter highlight areas, letting once again letting the color underneath. It, it might almost be unnoticeable. At this point, <laughs> I'm putting color on here at all. I think you can see it if I bring it into this area here. Uh, but these these lighter areas that we're going to use white to glaze, I think we really want to, you know, start those off really thin. And, if, and of course, if you go too if you go too light, you can always glaze back over it. So first I'm kind of hitting the area strong here, and then I'll blend it. I have uh, some of it. Bring some of that into probably way back into this area, and we'll blend that out. Okay, see some of it's dripping over here. We'll um, blend that in. Clean my brush off a little bit. Now, okay, now so I just. Hit that with some of this white. It's kind of thick here and a little bit running, but we're going to go ahead.
area in here, I took that gray color I had mixed earlier, which I had added white to to make the lighter. Now I want to darken some of this shadow area and we're working with the same basic colors here. So, you know, I just took the uh, this mi middle gray area a, a color and added some of my black to it to darken it. Um, we're not going straight to black or anything really, really dark. It's again, we want to build these areas up that way. But you can see in this darker area here, uh, we're gonna. I added some black to that meat to that gray, to that color, and now we're. Um, I've hit it real real quick there with some of that dark color in the deepest part of the shadows. Now I'll just I notice some areas we're going to have a little bit of touch of blue. I see in my photograph. I'm not worried about that right now. We will glaze some more blue tint into some some of these little areas in this mask. It's just a slight blue tint. We're going to glaze those in late, late, later layers when I really get into the finishing touches and the finishing details, we'll, we'll start glazing some of the subtle color variations in later. So just blend, I'm gonna blend that in. Well, I think you can see with each, you know, each day that we do our glazing, this this painting, this uh, area gets more, gets more depth to it, gets more closer to the results every time uh, that we're, we're looking. We're, we're far from finished yet. You can see there's a lot of dark values here that we need to reach. But once again, we're not rushing right to that dark value with thick paint. That's called Alla Prima. We're doing it with glazes, so we're gonna build up to that. And I think you can see every time that we work on this, uh, we get closer to our goal. Hi, I hope you found this demonstration of glazing techniques, part two, useful. And if you did, and you like what you see, or at least find it instructive, give me a like, 
and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Take care.